clean all new windows, all new roofs, um, in major improvements on the inside, ADA upgrades. Um, no, it's really great. I know there's a little bit of work to do left on the front piece, but it's really going to be spectacular. It's a heavily used library. I mean, it's uh, the busiest branch after the main library. North Quincy does the biggest business, so it makes sense geographically the way it's located as well. But I know I had a neighbor of mine who was hounding me to get that thing open. He loved it. <laughs> he's a retired guy, so I know he's happy. Yeah, there were a lot of smiling faces uh, when I was there it's, uh, being welcomed back, so it was nice to see. Absolutely. Mayor, I understand the city is under a cyber attack. You heard, huh? <laughs> I heard because it uh, impacted the police department first, and uh, I deal with them every day. But I know it's more widespread than that. It is, and um, you know, this is the world we live in now. We do have an excellent company that um, you know protects our systems from such things, uh, and then of course they brought in their forensic team over the weekend and essentially went through the entire system. Um, and trying to find out in every area what kind of access they might have gotten, if any. Um, you know, I'm expecting a report later today in detail, but um, it, it appears that it's not as bad as we had thought it could be, but it's not to say that there aren't some issues. But it does not appear that anyone's uh, information working for the city or anything was was, uh, was any access gain there at all. Um, so it's... Um, you know, it's one of those things you read about it all the time. Private businesses and hospitals, they deal with it. Um, you know, this person could be in a basement down the street or somewhere around the world. We, you know, it's just a crazy world in that respect. So we're on it, and I, you know, we'll make some further adjustments and upgrades and recommendations we get from our, our security experts uh, to keep it from happening again, I hope. Has there been any uh, demand for money at all? In this no. No, okay. So, no. so you really don't know if they actually stole any data. Well, we they we they know that they access certain files, but nothing's missing. Okay. Um. So it, it and they're still washing through everything. So yeah. Uh. But I expect the report sometime later today. Uh, it's very. I mean, they were in all weekend. They were actually looking at each and every, um, you know, desktop computer in City Hall and the other agencies, and uh, it's it's incredible. Uh. You learn so much in going through these things, but, mm-hmm. you know, how a virus can get in and the damage it can do, um, it's it's pretty amazing. And, and these people, I think they just sit in places and run different codes until they get a hit somewhere. Mm. Um, you know, so anyway, with, we're on it. Uh, Brian Glavin, our IT director, has done an outstanding job dealing with it, uh, you know, handling the, the team, if you will, and, and making sure we get back to normal. Thankfully, the police... You know, nine one one system did not get affected, mm-hmm. um, which was obviously great. I can't have that down, but right. um, you know, it's a learning experience. That's for sure. Yeah. Is there? I'm, I'm assuming there's a backup. Uh, everything's backed up. Yes. So there is that in, in, in the event. Okay. Boy, oh boy, uh, the times we live in, like you say. Yeah. Can we talk a little bit, Mayor, about uh, some items at the city council meeting last night? A couple of. Uh, Request for funding first for the Squantum Elementary School. Where does that stand now? Yeah, that's that would be the next step. Mm-hmm. So, I um, mean, the school building authority essentially has a process by which you follow, and uh, this is the next step. We were invited in. Now, it's going through the uh, through the study, and now uh, now it gets real. Now we start to spend some money uh, and get into some early iterations and and begin to move forward. So. Um, you know, it's a stretched out process, but nonetheless, we're in the process, and uh, there's no turning back now. So this will begin the official work with the architects and engineers on, on coming up with some iterations. Some of the counselors um, inquired about whether or not the new school could be a net zero building. Is that a possibility? I don't know. It's, it's early for that, Joe. I mean, we, yeah. we do strive for you know, a building that would be extremely environmentally friendly. We strive for building that's quality that will last a long, long time. Uh, and then you try to find economies so that we, you know, we're not paying for things that we don't need. So, um, you know, it's a balance act and, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I don't know yet if we can meet the net zero. Some of that depends on where the school is situated and what the, what the ground is like and what the water table is like. There's a lot of issues there. So we'll, uh, we'll certainly look toward that but we'll see what happens is the plan to use the existing footprint of the current school well the, the beauty is we have 
city-owned land right behind it, mm -hmm. you know, with, with park land there. So, you know, my guess is there'll be a brand new facility and the old school will come down uh, and replace the green space that the new school will have taken up. Okay. So it's kind of a swap off of the land, probably spend a little time on engineering with traffic in the in driveways and make things a little cleaner. Well, you know, when these schools were designed, they weren't designed for cars to be dropping kids off. They were designed for kids walking to school. Right. Yep. So we're going to make some adjustments on the traffic configuration as well. But my guess is it will be a little bit more residential looking, the building. Hmm. I mean, you're in the heart of a residential neighborhood. Certainly don't want a uh, commercial looking building. Um, so, and you know, there's some talk with that we like we did at Central, we took some elements from the old building and try to incorporate it into the new building. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, you know, again, it's early in the process, but uh, it should be a uh, a really good process and a fun process in some ways. Okay, very good. Uh, and also, uh, as you're well aware, a request for $2.3 million for two new fire department apparatus. Yeah, the a, a million doesn't go like it used to go, Joe. <laughs> it's, uh, I've been around government for a long time, and to see the, the numbers on fire wrapper and it's true of everything but um they take so long it's not like a dealership although these times you can't go up to a dealership and buy something off the lot either that's true but you know the fire apparatus they, they're built to order they're built from the scratch from the ground up and they take time so um you know we know that you know our equipment where it is but the life of things and we need another ladder truck and we need another engine uh and you know we're not going to get it tomorrow so if we get in the pipeline now hopefully mm -hmm. A year and a half out or so, we'll get them delivered. And again, we got to give our employees the tools they need, the resources they need to do the job we expect of them. Which uh, which ones would be replaced? It's it's uh, well, I, I you know that's up to the chief. Okay, I know that uh, sometimes they shift things around. For example, some stations are much busier than others. Yep. So so a newer engine may go to a busier station and. Uh, uh, and then one of those engines gets moved to one of the stations that may not be as busy. So that's up to the chief to figure out how he works it. Um, but, um, you know, I have confidence in him and the department to mm -hmm. figure that out. Sure. Uh, I know that the spare right now, the spare ladder truck, is, is 26 years old. Wow. Okay. And uh, so, um, you know, just replacing a front-line one, that front-line one then becomes the spare, um, and it's it's a lot newer than a 26-year-old piece. And when you're talking ladder trucks, um you know, the age of those things, you don't want to fool around with, you know, a 110-foot aerial ladder going up and right. having that kind of age to it. It's it's not good. Would this be a tiller ladder like, like the uh, last one? I believe it will be. They're very happy with that. Yeah. It, it's so much easier to negotiate around the streets and neighborhoods. Yeah. And, um, so, yeah, I believe it will be. Um, Councillor Mahoney had uh, suggested possibly using some pandemic relief funds to m purchase those vehicles. Is that a possibility? Uh, I'm not sure it's, el it's sure it's eligible. I mean, we, we check things all the time. Uh, I know it wasn't eligible, um, a year ago, but federal government continues to evolve and change rules all the time. So we, we watch that closely to see how best the federal dollars can be spent. But, uh, in, in either case, we got to get moving on it. Just like we, we do a bond for a school. If we get a certain percentage reimbursement, we get it and then we don't spend as much. So, um, we're always on, you know, lifting the rocks up, looking for <laughs> state and federal dollars. So um, we've done very well in that regard overall. Sure. Mayor, I just I, I remembered this morning you were still waiting to hear from the Boston Public Library about the John Adams collection. Any news on that? There, are, there No, there are no new news on that, Joe. Okay. Um, we're going to follow up again um, in the near future. I've got some attorneys looking at it for us and oh. to see the best strategy and approach going forward. We tried the nice guy approach, but I'm not sure that's going to work. So, <laughs> Very good. Thank you uh, for your time, Mayor, and enjoy the rain. <laughs> yeah, I'm much better. I will enjoy the rain this time of year. Thank you, Joe. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah,